Just a few weeks ago, I was starting to look at upgrading the wireless access point here in my house, from wireless N to wireless AC. I figured I should probably get with the times. And it just so happens that EuroDK.com reached out to me and asked if I'd like to review the Unify Nano HD. Now, as I already am a Ubiquiti household, I figured this would be a great upgrade for me, but number two, we could take a look at the device itself and find out if Unify is the right solution to go with for your house. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, my name's Jeff. Pay up, sucker. First things first, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. Like I said, this is the Ubiquiti Unify Nano HD access point. Now, unlike a lot of their previous access points, this one is super tiny, thus the Nano in the name. This is the Nano HD access point, and compared to the old uh, AP Pro access points, you can see it is significantly smaller. Whereas the UAP Pros used to hide among smoke detectors and light fixtures, this one blends in entirely. On the back of the Nano HD is this very tiny mounting plate, which I both love and hate, and I'll get into that in just a little bit when I go to actually screw this thing into the ceiling. Uh, around the backside, you'll also find your single RJ45 port, which is your power and data input, as well as a reset button. Other accessories in the box is a little quick start guide, which tells you how to set up the Unify access points from your smartphone or from your computer. Uh, you've got a drop ceiling mount right here. And also included in the box is a PoE plus injector, which delivers 48 volts over Cat5e or Cat6 cabling. Uh, now, in my case, they did send me over a Euro plug, but uh, it is just a standard, uh, gosh, I believe that's a C15. It's the Mickey Mouse head cable. So you can use whatever cable you want or a PoE switch. You've also got a collection of screws and drywall anchors, both for drop ceiling mount and drywall installation. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get this thing fired up and see what it takes to get one set up. This is my Proxmox virtualization server, and I will be running the Unify server on a virtual machine today. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about Proxmox, you can click my tutorial link. Well, I guess it's gonna be way up there right now, isn't it? Anyway, you can run Unify server on either a virtual machine or inside of a virtualized container. The virtualized container will use less resources, but as I have all of the CPU and memory I could ever want in this server, that's really not an issue for me, and this video really isn't the place to be having that argument. So let's just get into the configuration. My Unify server is running on Ubuntu 18.04 LTS inside of the virtual machine, and I actually installed Unify using the Debian apt repository. The advantage to this is it will update Unify with the rest of the Ubuntu packages. If you'd like instructions on how to do this, I will have a link down in the video description. Now, full disclosure, I didn't write these commands, so I will also include a source link for where I found them, so you can double check against my condensed version. Now, as I said, there are multiple ways of setting up Unify access points. If you're only gonna be running one or two access points, you could just set them up on your smartphone and call it a day. If you're gonna be running a firewall or multiple access points, I really do recommend setting up on a server of some kind, whether it's a virtual machine or some dedicated PC hardware. A really nice thing though, is if you take those instructions down below, you should be able to run those same commands on a Raspberry Pi and run a Unify server on one of those if you'd rather do that. But I know my audience very well, which is why I'm focusing on the server aspect of this rather than the smartphone setup version of this. But once the infrastructure is in place, you could very easily add more devices, access points, security cameras, etc., and expand your home network accordingly. So let's go ahead and get the Nano HD plugged in right after I get my UAP Pro plugged back in because Unify is yelling at me because I disconnected it so I could hold it up here. If this is your first time setting up a Unify device, you will have to go through a couple additional steps here, such as setting up your local area network, as well as what wireless networks you'd like your devices to use. That can be done down here in the settings menu, and then clicking on networks to set up your basic network for your gateway, DNS, LAN IP addresses, DHCP, etc. And then over on wireless networks is where you're gonna set up your wireless network information and password. Getting the Unify Nano HD physically connected to your network is fairly straightforward, and we are going to use the power over Ethernet injector included in the box, although like I said, you could also use a PoE-enabled switch. So for starters, we're going to take a Cat5e or Cat6 cable and connect it to our switch, and then connect to the LAN port on the PoE injector. Next, we're going to take another Cat5e or Cat6 cable and connect it to the PoE side of the injector, and this is what's going to go to the access point. Plug that cable into the one port on the Nano HD, and you should get a light on it. Don't know if you can see that, but I can see it here. There we go. <laughs> After just a couple of minutes, you should see the Nano HD show up in the Devices tab of your Unify server and say Pending Adoption Update Required. Update Required simply means it has a firmware update that's available for the device, and Pending Adoption means it's ready to be joined to your Unify network. 
So we're gonna go all the way to the right and say adopt and upgrade and then say confirm. Now we can see the light. It's a nice bright blue once it's been added to our Unify network. So while this is being updated and added to my network, let's talk about what makes the Nano HD different from an off the shelf wireless router that you'd buy at Fry's or Micro Center. Specifically, I'm gonna compare this to the Nighthawk AC1900 from Netgear, which is a pretty darn good home-based network router and wireless access point. The Nighthawk retails for about $190, although I have seen it as cheap as about $140 on Amazon and from a few various retailers. The Nighthawk AC1900 is pretty much a do-it-all device for the home network, much like most home routers that you would buy. It provides DHCP and DNS for your local area network. It connects all of your devices up to your ISP via a cable modem, DSL, or fiber connection. And there's some more advanced features on it, like disconnecting your kids at night, but letting them surf during the day. Like most do everything devices, it does pretty well at the basic tasks, but as soon as I need more functionality or more expandability, the Nighthawk really starts to fall short, especially when it comes to the wireless hardware, and you'll see exactly what I mean when we compare it to the Nano HD. The Nano HD is a wireless access point, and that's it, which means it does rely on other devices to provide home routing for DHCP and DNS, as well as connecting to your internet service provider. However, that is really a benefit when you start to look at the more advanced features of the hardware. The Unify Nano HD retails for $179, which is only about $10 cheaper than a Nighthawk 1900. So why am I going to recommend this over an all-in-one device like the Nighthawk? Well, stick with me for the rest of the hardware review and I will explain all of that. Like the Nighthawk, I was able to find lower prices on the internet and the lowest I actually found was on eurodk.com at $142. Now, they did not provide me with that information, nor did they ask me to talk about the price that they offered on their website, but they do offer worldwide shipping. And I figured both of those were nice little tidbits, especially because they offered this device up for review in the first place. The reason I'm going to recommend something like the Nano HD over an all-in-one device like the Nighthawk is because of the wireless quality, the coverage, and the throughput you get out of a device like this over an all-in-one device like a Nighthawk or a basic home router. Now, the Nighthawk 1900 does have 802.11 AC gigabit Wi-Fi. However, you will never ever see gigabit Wi-Fi speeds out of that connection. And it's because of a gross miscommunication about what Wi-Fi speeds actually are. The Nighthawk is what's called a simultaneous dual band radio. It's capable of broadcasting a single 2.4 gigahertz signal and a single 5 gigahertz signal. The 2.4 is capable of 802.11 n connections, which will connect at up to 600 megabit per second, and the 5 gigahertz connection can handle up to 1.3 gigabit per second. However, both of those come with some pretty major caveats. A radio in a wireless access point can only communicate with one client at a time. Now I know what you're saying, but I have 12 devices on my home network and they're all connected at the same time. I know, the radio can only serve one set of packets to one device at a time, and then it has to change its attention to another device. The more devices you have requesting packets, the slower it's going to go. Now it does it so quickly, most of the time you don't notice the delay, but there is a delay inherent, and there's a lot of overhead with packets involved in that process. Caveat number two, 50% of the wireless speed that's advertised on your Wi-Fi point is lost to overhead of the actual communication. The Nano HD is also an AC Wave 2 device, which means it can support many, many more simultaneous connections on a radio, even if it's not serving all of them at the exact same time than a Wave 1 device like the Nighthawk could. Wave 2 AC has shown in lab situations a throughput of up to 2.34 gigabit on a single connection. However, remember, you're only gonna get about 50% of that or about 1.15 gigabit. Now, the Nano HD has only shown throughputs of about 1.7 gigabit per second or about 850 megabit, which is pretty darn close to the line rate of a gigabit cable of about 940 megabit per second. So pretty darn good and a pretty substantial upgrade from something like a Nighthawk, which has really a max of about 650. I know, there's a lot of numbers and not a lot of pretty things to look at in this video. I apologize right now. <laughs> so what is so different about the Nano HD that I recommend buying it at the premium price tag as a standalone device? Well, really, it is the wireless hardware that's inside of this. Remember how the Nighthawk has only a single radio that broadcasts two bands? This has six separate radios inside of it, four just for five gigahertz and two that handle 2.4 all on their own. And since I'm apologizing, I might as well apologize for the sudden costume change and change in lighting. Uh, I ran out of time to film that video, so we're just gonna continue on as if nothing ever happened. The six separate radios inside of the Nano HD operate only on a single band each. Two of the radios operate at 2.4 gigahertz, while the other four take care of the five gigahertz spectrum. Essentially what that means compared to the Nighthawk is the Nano HD is capable of handling six separate packet streams to six separate devices all at the same time, whereas the Nighthawk can only do one and then it has to turn its attention to the next device in line. But enough about the hardware, let's go ahead and finish the installation so we can actually start using this thing as a wireless access point. 
So over here on my Unify controller, you can see that the Nano HD has been added and is now connected just like my two existing Unify devices. Clicking on the Nano HD brings up a menu where I can change the settings of the device itself. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually change this to a static IP address so it falls in line with the rest of my devices. That is done by clicking on the config menu, going down to network, and then changing this over to static IP address. And we're going to change that from a 68 to a 16, set our subnet mask, set our default gateway, and then our preferred DNS server. And then hit apply changes. You can see over on the left hand side, the Nano HD is now provisioning, which means it is applying the settings that I just sent to it. Now, keep in mind that when an access point is provisioning settings, it will usually disconnect all of the clients associated with it. So if you do apply new settings, it's probably gonna kick all of your wireless devices off. Once the access point is done updating, it will go back to a connected state and it's ready to serve wireless clients again. On your Unify server, if you only have one wireless network set up to broadcast, well, your access points will automatically grab that network and start broadcasting it. If you have multiple networks or if you have guest networks you'd like to broadcast, you'll need to select which ones you would like your access points to broadcast. How many times can I say broadcast in a single sentence? One thing you may have noticed at the top of each device menu is this little signal chart that's right up here. This is actually the current wireless channel that your access point is broadcasting on and how crowded that individual channel is in your local area. At the top is our 2.4 gigahertz radio currently broadcasting on channel 11 and the bottom is our 5 gigahertz radio currently broadcasting on channel 151. As you can see just a second ago, we did spike up to about 80% utilization in the network and that will fluctuate between honestly about 20 and 50% in my neighborhood throughout the day. However, at five gigahertz, we're pretty underutilized here. And honestly, I've never had any interference or signal issues with five gigahertz. At a basic level, if you're looking to get a better quality wireless network in your home or office, or your needs have just expanded beyond what you can get with a premium home router, like a Nighthawk, then the Unify Nano HD might be exactly what you're looking for. Heck, you could even connect one of these up to your Nighthawk and replace the wireless functionality on it entirely. And at $142, it's not terribly expensive for the additional performance it gives your home network. And more than just home use, Unify access points are bona fide entry-level professional hardware, sometimes usurping the likes of Aruba, Ruckus, Cisco, or other devices because of high hardware costs or licensing fees. The Unify server is free and runs on your own hardware and includes a whole slew of management options for more advanced setups. Ubiquiti also has some lower cost options if you're not quite ready to take the full plunge. For example, they have the AC Lite access points, which are only $72. Now they only include two radios instead of six, but those two radios still well outperform most home routers that are on the market. And at just $72, you could actually afford to buy two of them for the cost of one of the Nano HDs and double the coverage in your home or office. I've been a longtime fan of Unify hardware. My UAP Pro Point has been mounted right outside my office door for about the last five years, and I haven't had a single problem with it since I installed it. The Nano HD is gonna take its place in the ceiling. Meanwhile, the Pro Point is gonna get new life, moving downstairs and filling in any coverage gaps that I might have. And it's exactly this kind of expansion which makes investment in the Unify system worth it in my book. But what do you guys think? Is the Nano HD or other Unify access points worth the price over a standalone router solution, or are you happy with with a Nighthawk router. Sound off in the comments down below. If you're interested in picking up a Unify Nano HD for yourself, or you wanna take a look at any of the other Unify gear I mentioned today, I will have a link down to eurodk.com down in the video description. Do give them a look as honestly, they are the best prices that I've seen on a lot of this gear. Oh, and they're also the same company that I bought my Mikrotik 10 gig fanless switch from a couple of months ago. So I will also include a link down to that. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, and if you do like what you see on this channel, consider backing me on Patreon. All of my backers get access to my exclusive Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from my live show, Talking Heads. We really do have a fantastic community forming over there, and I'm not just saying that because I run it. I genuinely do hang out there a lot. And I know it's usually expected that I have a beer when I'm ending the episode, but I didn't pour myself one this afternoon. So unfortunately, we're gonna have a little bit of an awkward intro where I just say, thank you guys as always so much for watching this one. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.